close your eyes for a minute and imagine you're standing in front of an empty lot in a nice neighborhood and it's going to be yours. You're going to own it. You can build whatever you want on that lot. Tell me what that looks like. Um, the first thing I imagined was actually the outdoor space um, because that's something that's really important to me. Um, and having, you know, maybe some privacy outside or at least a little green area. It would be an, a very tiny house. It would be eco-friendly. It would be probably out of materials that are easily uh, sustainable, like bamboo. One floor, that's our playroom for playing ping pong and darts and other like games and activities that we like to do with each other and our friends. Maybe like a garden, um, a town garden. I myself, I like personal, personally I like um, gardens and like anything from nature. There would be a slip and slide out of a window that drops 20 feet into a pool. I'd probably put some Connex boxes on there because I've, I've, I just sort of like that trend that's happening right now. A lot of space just for, you know, couches, maybe a fireplace. One whole wall where I could keep my books places for my files. Uh, I would prefer a smaller house, one that is run on sustainable energy, whether that, you know, some maybe solar power. What do you mean by what would it look like? On the outside. What kind of house does it look uh, Just a regular house, you know, small house. I don't, I don't, uh, I, I, I live at the McDonald House and uh, it's public housing and uh, you know. And what's that like? It's, it's like, uh, it's not very private, you know what I mean? Like you can't even go into a building without seeing about eight people and you can't go out of the building without seeing about eight people and you know, it's just not, not comfortable. There's a lot of light in my home that comes in during the day, which I really like. There's an open space with my dining table and my kitchen, and um, it's an older home from the 1800s, and I at least like the style of the home. Um, I actually live on the second floor of a house. It's a three-family. My boyfriend lives on the top floor. It's kind of small, but we make it work. It's just me, my mom, and her boyfriend, and my dog, so it's, it's not a bad place, but it's just, it's a small place. I like it because you get to know your neighbors better, um, but I also don't like it because you can hear, like my landlord, she lives downstairs, she has a daycare going, so we, ha we hear like little crazy kids just like banging on things, like screaming every morning, that's what I wake up to. So it is kind of, there's a disadvantage to that, but it's also, kind of cool because you just like you know your neighbors and I don't see that enough these days you know so, yeah. when you put on your coat and you give me that look I get a burning in my body baby I get a burning in my body baby oh when you laugh where I currently live, I currently own a condo, and I actually, I really love it. It's in an old Victorian house. The house was built in 1863. And there are lots of things that I like about it. And it has a lot of what I'm looking for. It has a nice big kitchen, it has a cozy feel to it. It's an older house. It's got, you know, slanted ceilings and um, old hardwood floors. So I really love that aspect of it. What I dislike is that I have no yard. I don't have any outdoor space. I live on a busy street, you know, so there's a lot of traffic noise and that kind of thing. I live right here in Northampton, like literally around the corner from where we're shooting. Um, and we rent a really awesome New England house that was built in the 1920s or something. But it is such a waste of uh, resources as far as like heating it. I really like this area because of the older housing that's here. Um, you know, you, I don't really like the complexes that are the cookie cutter type housing, houses. I like going down a street and having each and every house be completely different. Um, and so for me personally, that's what I'm drawn towards. 
Um, I, like being in an area such as that and having a house that does not look like a cookie cutter or a house architecturally that is different from what anyone's ever seen. That's appealing to me. I live uh, in, a, in a house, like an apartment. A uh, house has been like, divided into apartments over on um, 66. And it's pretty big. It's, you know, and it, it was 850 a month, which is about as low as I could get right around here, which is doable. Um, and it's, it's not like I was looking at a lot of other apartments around that price point that were a lot worse. So it was, I like it because it wasn't those. Again, a lot of the places that I went to, I, I was looking at was just like, it was a room with everything in it and then a closet and then maybe like a bathroom if you were lucky. Do you feel like we're, we have the kinds of houses you want to see here or would you like to see something different? So I don't want to see anything different. You don't want to see anything different. So the kind of community that we have, we have a lot of people that are on the streets, right? Uh, like sleeping on the streets? Oh, yeah. And it's like kind of really expensive here. So it's really hard to find housing that you can afford if you don't have a lot of money. Okay. I think it would be awesome if there was more housing like that around here. Be more specific, what do you mean? Low income housing, because it's, I mean, there's only a certain kind of population that can really live in here in Northampton and survive. And uh, some more affordable housing would be good. I mean, it's interesting, the houses here were often built in triple deckers, like in Worcester, for three families. So it was the, the grandparents would live on the first floor, the family and children would live on the second floor, you know, or, and then the children, when they became adults, would live on the top floor. So it's interesting, I lived in a triple decker in Worcester, and you could easily get three families, three different families now, in those triple deckers. And we don't have that kind of housing in Western Mass. These are single family, big garden, big uh, land areas. In some ways, we need to go back to that old 18th century model. The average size of a house in 1973 was 1,660 square feet. That was in 1973. By 2007, it was 25, 2600. So we went into the starter mansion period. <laughs> And that was, you know, the period in which everything was getting bigger and bigger. I think people uh, design houses according to a, probably still, even still, a kind of 19th century Victorian idea of how people lived. And that was you had a parlor where you entertained. And of course, the women weren't supposed to work. They, were, did, they did housework, but they weren't expected to be writing novels or uh, doing freelance writing or anything, they look after the children or something like that. And if you were rather upscale Victorian, I guess you had a nanny who looked after your kids. Life has changed tremendously since then. And so, but, but we still sort of design our houses that way. I guess my dream home, really, would be a passive house, you know, hermetically sealed. It's climate controlled by just, you know, the structure of itself, you know, the doors and the windows and things like that. I, uh, I would love to have some solar panels on there. You know, I, I would like to be off the grid as much as possible. You know, a gray water system even, you know, <laughs> like I would love to go full on, you know, if given the opportunity, the time and the money, I would, I would definitely build that. We should have our own houses probably closely knit together so we still have like that sense of like community and like neighborhood kind of like connection, you know, because we don't have that anymore. I remember I had a discussion with another fellow and he said basically what you find a lot of is people don't want to be the odd one. There's like this built-in fear of being separate. So when you look at a house, everyone says, well, yes, they go to federal style, colonial style because it's what you've seen. It may not be what you really want. And it seems that we have to have that discussion with our clients is that, you know, this is what you've seen, okay, but what do you want? What do you want your space to function as? And then when you start, you know, doing that whole breakdown like we did in college of what you want, what you see, what you experience, what you feel, what you see, you know, put all those experiences together, lump them together, put them in a box, shake them up, and then, okay, what is the strongest one you feel like? And you start pulling the stronger ones out and you have these components 
you can then mold them into something. Virginia and they have been now in the suburbs reconstructing these kind of fake towns that are almost uh, they have all these little you know boutique shops and stuff but what they really want is these New England towns that are um, sort of organic towns that have different populations in them you know that are more diverse I think it's kind of interesting to see that uh, some states are now actually trying to reconstruct that and it's all around walking you know it's all around people living close smaller smaller homes of smaller units, people are having less kids, you know, I think that's kind of where we're going. Can we react fast enough, you know, to, to meet people's needs? I don't know. I think the states that are, are going to have the economic benefit and the population benefit. Students will move to those places where they can afford housing.